Hey there, welcome back to this channel. I am Juliette, the creator of Concierge CPA, a free platform to help students, business owners, or anyone interested in learning accounting and finance joyfully. Today, we're gonna to talk about the income statement. We will start with a brief overview of the three main financial statements, a detailed discussion of the line items that are included in an income statement in accordance with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, and we will discover how the income statement is used in the real world to measure business performance. And if you watch until the end, we will take a look at a couple of real income statements of public companies filed with the SEC. So let's begin. A company's financial statements are the primary means of communicating accounting information to users. Companies prepare three main financial statements to explain their business using financial terms. These are the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows. These financial statements are not perfect pictures of the financial health of a company, but management's best effort to communicate their financial performance and standing. For that reason, understanding the information presented by each statement is crucial for the information to be useful for decision-making. The balance sheet provides a snapshot of a company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity at a specific point in time. It offers insights into what the company owns and owes, as well as the invested capital. The cash flow statement outlines the inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents. It is crucial for understanding how well a company generates cash to fund its operating expenses and debt obligations. The income statement, the third main financial report and the focus of this video is called sometimes the profit and loss statement, the statement of earnings, or statement of operations. This statement communicates how much revenue the company generated during a period of time and what cost it incurred in connection with generating that revenue. The period of time is typically a quarter or a year, but it could be a month or six months. This period of time is known as the accounting period. The income statement is the primary source of information on a company's operating performance. Investors, lenders, and other financial statement readers use this to report and other financial information to predict the amount, timing, and uncertainty of the company's future income and cash flows. Let's take a look at the format and information presented in an income statement. Under GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, the income statement can be formatted in either a single step or multi-step format. The single step format is a simple presentation where all revenues and gains are grouped together and all expenses and losses are grouped together. The net income is then calculated as the difference between the total revenues and total expenses. This format is straightforward with a primary focus on the bottom line, net income. In this single step income statement, all the revenues and gains are totaled under total revenues, and all the expenses and losses are totaled under total expenses. The net income is then derived by subtracting the total expenses from the total revenue. The simplicity of the single step income statement, while advantageous for straightforward presentation, can indeed limit its utility, particularly in more complex financial analysis. It does not provide detailed insights into the various operational aspects of the business, such as gross profit, operating income, and non-operating items. In contrast, the multi-step income statement provides a more detailed view. This format is beneficial for providing a clearer picture of a company's operational efficiency and profitability from core business activities, separate from its other financial activities. It categorizes a company's revenues and expenses into operating and non-operating sections and adds several intermediate subtotal measures of income. A typical multi-step income statement contains the following line items. At the top, we have gross revenue. This figure includes the total income generated from all business operations, including sales of products and other services. The term Gross is used to show that no expenses have been deducted from the amount. Next, we have cost of goods sold. This amount includes the direct costs associated with production of the goods sold. In a retail business, it would be the cost of the inventory sold. In a manufacturing business, the calculation of cost of sales would be a bit more complex. It would be the calculated cost of producing the goods sold. 
In this example, the cost of goods sold for Pizza Lovers Inc. will be the cost of the ingredients used to make the pizza. Direct costs in service businesses are those that are directly associated with the provision of their services and can be directly traced to the service process or specific service offerings. These costs include direct labor costs and direct materials. The gross margin or gross profit is the difference between gross sales and cost of goods sold. This is your first useful subtotal and it is typically used to evaluate how efficiently a company manages labor and supplies in production. Next, you will list your operating expenses. This includes selling and marketing expenses, which are expenses incurred by the business in an effort to generate sales. Operating expenses also include general and administrative expenses. These are costs related to the day-to-day -day operations of the business, such as personnel, accounting and finance, and the operating costs of the company's headquarters. These operating expenses are also called overhead costs or indirect costs. They are the ongoing expenses required to operate a business, but they do not include the direct costs of producing a product or service. We then calculate the subtotal operating profit or loss by deducting the total operating expenses from the gross profit subtotal. This figure represents the income from core business operations. It is the profit generated after deducting the direct cost of sales and the indirect cost of operating a business. Below this operating profit loss subtotal, you will find the non-operating section of the income statement. This includes revenues and expenses that are not directly related to the core operations of a business, such as earnings from interest, dividends, gains, interest expenses, and others. The non-operating section is presented separately on the income statement to allow users to distinguish between the results of core business activities and other financial events, aiding in a clearer evaluation of a company's operating performance. And we have now arrived at the third subtotal, income before income taxes. The sum of operating income and non-operating items shows profitability before the effect of tax expenses. Next, we have the income tax expense, which is a provision for federal, state, and foreign income taxes. And finally, you have your bottom line, net income. The final profit or loss after all revenues and expenses, including taxes, have been accounted for. Now, if you want to learn more about indirect and direct costs, variable versus fixed expenses, make sure to subscribe to this channel as I will be releasing a video specifically on managerial accounting income statements that will cover those concepts and others in detail. But for now, let's discuss how the multi-step income statement helps stakeholders measure a business performance. Comparing the single-step income statement to the multi-step income statement side-by-side side makes it very easy to see how the multi-step income statement is a valuable tool for investors, analysts, and management to assess a company's profitability due to its detailed structure. It separates the operating components from the non-operating ones, which helps in understanding a company's core business performance. This level of detail becomes particularly useful when comparing the business performance over time. Preparing a multi-step income statement for comparative periods allows analysts to identify trends, measure performance over time, and detect operational efficiencies or inefficiencies. For example, an increase in gross profit margin over time may indicate improved production efficiency or pricing strategies. Let's take a look at this example, the multi-step income statement analysis for two periods. Let's analyze the variances together. Sales revenue increased by $100,000 potentially due to increased sales volume or pricing changes. The cost of goods sold increased by $50,000, which could indicate higher material costs or increased production. The gross profit, despite the rise in cost of goods sales, gross profit increased, suggesting that the sales growth outpaced the increase in production costs perhaps a successful pricing strategy. The operating income increased by $30,000, but at a slower rate than gross profits, suggesting higher operating expenses. Interest expense rose by $5,000, which could impact net income if not managed. The net income increased by $20,000, showing improved profitability overall, despite higher interest expenses and operating costs. Comparing these two periods reveals that the company is growing and becoming more profitable, although the rising costs may warrant attention to maintain margins. 
Now, if you're still watching, stay a few minutes longer and take a look with me at a real life income statement file with the SEC. Here is the consolidated statement of operations for Apple filed with the SEC for the year ended September 30, 2023. Notice they use the multi-step format. First, they list the sales. There are two things to notice here. First, they use the word net instead of gross. This means that there is something more in this calculation, and you should also look at the notes provided with the financial statements. They are also providing the breakdown of sales that come from products and services. Then they provide the cost of sales of products and services, giving us a gross margin number, which as we learned earlier, is the profit earned after accounting for direct cost of production. Then we have the operating expenses, which are the indirect costs and then the operating income. The next section, as expected, is the other income, which is the non-operating income. The next line gives us the income before taxes, then the provision for income taxes, and finally, the bottom line, net income. The EPS, or earnings per share, you see here is a disclosure requirement for SEC filers, but it is a topic for a future video. And here is the filed income statement for Microsoft as a bonus for watching until the end. Again, same format, the multi-step income statement format, starting with sales, cost of sales, giving us the gross margin. Then we have the research and development costs, general and administrative expenses, which are the operating expenses. We then have the operating income following by the non-operating income, here labeled as other income, net. That brings us to the income before income taxes, then the provision for tax, and finally, the net income. And that is all for today's video. The information presented in this video is a very broad overview of the format of the income statement, the information it provides, and how it is useful for analysis. If you want to learn more about the many components and how the numbers are calculated, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel as I will be making many more videos on these topics. Also, leave a comment for any suggestions or video topics that you would like to see. I hope you enjoyed and learned with this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.